And then you could say it's also the most dangerous time to brush your teeth. For sure, are you talking before. fluoride? No, because of the microplastics in tooth toothpaste as well. I was just going down that rabbit hole thinking about this as well. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's microplastics in toothpaste and it's crazy. And you don't and, and you don't use any toothpaste, is that right? I don't use any toothpaste. Nothing. People always say, How do you get your teeth white? I don't know if they're like as white as they show up on the video because I have like sunlight coming in. They're not brown. But what I do for my teeth is I don't drink coffee, I don't drink tea. I don't drink things that are going to stain my teeth. I just drink water. And we can talk about the water that I do drink because I've been thinking about water a lot recently. And then I don't use toothpaste because it doesn't make any sense. Like, what is the point of toothpaste? Um, what is the point of fluoride? The point of fluoride is that it is anti-cavity, but then we have all of these questions that are lurking in the dental space about could excess fluoride be harmful for humans? And I think it definitely can be. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that excess fluoride is harmful. You don't want fluoride in your gel. When I was a kid, I go to the dentist and I had these fluoride trays. They put fluoride jelly and they make you sit there and had this weird texture in your mouth and just fluoride all in your mouth. And of course you're swallowing in, getting a huge dose of fluoride as a kid. And then in the toothpaste, a lot of the toothpaste have fluoride and a lot of the water has fluoride. So there's fluoride everywhere. But the reason we're using so much fluoride is because people are massively nutrient deficient, kind of back to the same, this is why it's so dangerous to be a vegetarian or vegan. Because even without looking at soil depletion of nutrients, which we'll get into, a vegetarian or a vegan is likely going to be deficient in vitamin K2 and other fat soluble vitamins. So K2 is menaquinone, You've probably talked about this on your podcast, but K2 is so freaking critical um, for tooth health, along with D and E and other fat-soluble vitamins, which are predominantly found in animal foods. You can't get much of them, if any, in plant foods. Some people would say, oh, natto is fermented soybeans, but the vitamin K2 in natto, I believe, is mostly MK7, not MK4. And um, I could be wrong, but it's one of those two isoforms of metaquinone. Um, and MK4 is the one you really want. And it's made by bacteria. It's not made by the soybeans. It's made by a fermentation process in the bacteria. So soil depletion of nutrients, yes, but vegetarians and vegans, definitely nutrient deficient, leading to cavities. Cavities are not exclusively the consumption of sugar. Processed sugar isn't a good thing to put in your mouth. You know that I'm not afraid of putting fruit in my mouth or honey in my mouth. I have a very healthy dentition. I don't have any cavities. I eat a lot of honey every day but I brush my teeth once a day with no toothpaste and I don't need fluoride because I have tons of fat soluble nutrients from animals in my diet. And that's another reason that I don't use toothpaste is this idea of microplastics. Like I don't want anything extra in my toothpaste, whether it's PEG, polyethylene glycol, or these supposed microplastics like polyoxamer 404. And there's all kinds of crappy microplastics in toothpaste. Some toothpaste has carrageenan, which is a, an algal, uh, derivative. It's like a long chain molecule from algae. That's a thickener that has been shown to be damaging in the human gut. So why would you want more chemicals in your mouth and your diet? It, that's just a horrible thing for humans. So dangerous time to be a vegetarian or a vegan, <laughs> dangerous time to be a pescatarian because of microplastics in the fish. We can talk about that dangerous time to brush your teeth with toothpaste. How about that? Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing, like when you visited the tribes, now, I have seen some tribesmen where their dental teeth, their dental health looks terrible. Now, are those yeah, yeah. the ones that had like corn and sugar and stuff brought in from the missionaries? So there's differences. So if you look at the Maasai, the Maasai generally have big, broad, white smiles. And the Hadza are hunter-gatherers, and a lot of the Hadza have brown stains on their teeth. But the Hadza are well known to be very addicted to tobacco and marijuana, and they also probably have exposure to large amounts of fluoride in the water source. So you're back to fluoride. So I don't know if the Maasai don't have exposure to these fluoride water sources, but even in Tanzania, in the, in the cities, you'll see people who have grown up in the cities and they have these big brown stains on their teeth from fluorosis, from excess fluoride in the water when they're growing up. And this is massive amounts of fluoride in the water in Tanzania. So you get these big brown stains on the teeth, but the Hadza have a lot of those brown stains. And it's hard to know whether that's smoking, marijuana, fluoride in the water, you know, where are they getting it from? Are they getting a contaminated river? But I don't think that the Hadza necessarily have cavities as much as they have a lot of brown stains. People will look at them and be like, their teeth don't look great. But if you look at generally hunter-gatherers like the Maasai, if they don't smoke a lot, they have big, broad, white smiles. I mean, there's tons of examples of this. Weston Price's book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, is the best illustration of big, broad, wide jaws. And the hypothesis would be that adequate fat-soluble nutrition as a child in utero 
even into adulthood, helps us get broad jaws with open throats. We call this the pharynx that aren't prone to sleep apnea. So there's, there's this concern, right, that we breathe through our mouths, number one, because our noses are misformed or our noses are too narrow because we're not getting enough fat-soluble vitamins in pregnancy, in utero, in our childhood. And then we breathe through our mouths, which causes the chin to be pushed back. We don't have these like really well-formed chins. We don't have good jaw bones or wide jaws because of this potentially poor nutrition, evolutionarily inconsistent nutrition throughout our childhood and, and infancy and all those kinds of things. And again, I had braces when I was a kid. I was probably you know, deficient and all that stuff when I was a kid too. And my mom wasn't eating liver. She wasn't eating a lot of meat when I was in, in the womb. Thankfully, I'm sure she was eating some, but you know, my, my childhood nutrition could have been way better 